Every election year, we hear from the mainstream news media with their 10,000 employees, with their tens of millions of dollars. They say they can't get in touch with all the candidates. They can't tell the public about everyone who is running for an election. Well, for 18 years, no sound bites allowed. We have been reaching out to those other voices to let the public know who is running in your local election, who is running for that race that will directly affect your life. And we did that again this year in the Bronx, talking to the Bronx conservatives who are running besides the Republicans and the Democrats, because you deserve to know who's on the ballot and to make your choice, not the choice of the news media. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. We are here at the Bronx Conservative Party Community Event. It is a candidate meeting, and we have with us Gonzalo Duran, who we've done an interview with. I hope uh, we're going to have a great time. And before we start off, Gonzalo, I want to ask you, why are we having this event? Well, first off, um, you know, this is the 15th Congressional District where we are. And instead of just throwing my platform out there, I wanted the other county... Uh, candidates to have their opportunity as well since I'm more well known and I have that reputation to 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 get the, the crowds in and locations I want to share what I have with them as well okay and let me ask you uh, what is the purpose what I understand that's why we're here but what's the purpose tonight so the, the biggest purpose the theme of this is to show the community that the conservative has an army built that we've we've been structuring for the last year and a half so now you're going to see congressional leaders uh senate and assembly uh candidates all in one spot all in one location to get their family their friends and community members out to get their platforms and their their community work those candidates to have their platforms told to them directly and what do you expect will be the outcome from tonight? So it, one thing that for sure that I know is going to come out and that I want to come out is so that other people can see there are different type of conservatives, um, co um, people in the conservative line. So there's going to be um, maybe uh, one group in the 80, let's say the 81st district in which is the northern part speaking here in the South Bronx and the people in the South Bronx speaking in front of the people in the North Bronx. And they can see that we have the same agenda and that is one. To, to knock out the, the, the Bronx uh, Democratic machine, to get our work uh, recognized, and for um, the policies and changes that we all want to be vocally spoken across the board. And is there anything else you'd like to mention at this time before we start? Yes, so, you know, once again, me coming out to, uh, to hold this event, um, it shows how the Bronx Conservative Party is, is fully formed now so that we can get stuff done and now we're now we're gonna be on the attack. This is uh this is me showing that we have an army belt and we're ready to start taking action. Well Gonzalo I thank you for taking a few moments with us and we're gonna try and speak with some of the other candidates as well. I thank you and I hope you're gonna have a great as always, evening. As always thank you and God bless America. All right folks so we are here at the Bronx Conservative Party community outreach with all of the candidates. It's candidate night and we have one of the candidates before the event able to speak with us and let me just allow him please introduce yourself my name is Tyree Goodman and I'm running for the 84th Assembly District and I'm also the CEO of Epigrav Vision and platform Epigrav TV no problem so let me ask what you're running for an elected office it's something yes. that a lot of people don't do which office are you running for uh, I'm running for the 84th Assembly District Leader Office, um, and the reason why I'm running is to also shed light on local government, um, local election, and to also have people who ask myself, because I'm 32 in my 30s, and I wanted to encourage the youth more to run for office and to also give them a platform and know that their voice is needed and is welcome in today's age. Okay. So, are you a Democrat, or independent, a conservative? Uh, I'm a moderate conservative. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but at the end of the day, I ask people to not look at me based off of my party, look at the individual. Um, for way too long as an American citizen, we look for people and to follow the parties of the agenda. My job here as a part of the party is to follow the agenda of the people. Okay. So, let me ask you, what are you looking to do tonight? Um, my job with my colleagues is pretty much to inform, let them know that, you know, there's no longer a two-party system in the Bronx. You have a third option, and we are the third option. Okay. And how has the response been so far to your race? 
Um, the community has been coming together, you know, they have been supporting, you know, we're still coming out there. I'm, this is my first election, so I'm still getting the runs of everything, you know, but as much as it's been a learning experience, my main job and my main focus is to make sure that they're educated on local elections and what's going on in today's age. You know what? A lot of people say, oh my God, it's too tough. I can't run. It's got to be crazy. You're a first time candidate. Is it really that hard? Um, honestly, no. It's more so about information. It's more so about knowing who the people to talk to. You know, as much as y'all people go out to vote, y'all got to understand that y'all have a right to be a part of your party, that you're also voting for these elected officials to be a part of as well. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you've really learned a whole lot about running for elections and being involved in the community. I'm looking forward to hearing your speech in a little bit. And I, I don't want to take you away from that. I know you want to get prepared, but I thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Welcome, Hello, everyone, and thank you. Yes, we are continuing to speak to many of the candidates here today. We're having an exciting time, and we have yet one more candidate. I'm going to let her explain and introduce herself. My name is Stephanie Luccio. I am a candidate for Assembly District 83, which is the Northeast Bronx. I am running because there needs to be a change in Albany. The one party ideology that exists is not one that was intended for our government. We were intended to be a representative government of the people. So when we talk about policies that are affecting our lives, when there's a one party rule, there's one mindset, one ideology that supersedes the needs of the people in the community. My run for office will be to break up that one party rule, that ideology, and bring more concepts, more innovative ideas into government and making sure that government abides by its restrictions and not overruling people's lives. Your first time candidate, is that exciting? I am a first time candidate. It is exciting and gut wrenching and overwhelming all at once. But it's exhilarating to talk with people because their reaction has been so positive to talk with me about what they think policies should be enacted and what changes they'd like to see. That's the kind of feedback I was looking forward to in this candidacy and I look forward to meeting more and more people coming up. Now, I know you're going to be speaking in just a few moments. I'm already getting a high sign that they're probably going to be starting in a moment. But I want to ask one other question. What do you think, what do you expect from tonight? Tonight's amazing to have all of these speakers here in one location and to have the community come out and support and to actually hear what each of us has to say, what we want to bring to Albany and beyond. This is really, I'd like to see more of these forums. It's exciting, very exciting. Thank you. Well, I'm sure you're going to do fantastic. It looks like you're very prepared. So I, I'm going to get out of your way. I'm going to let you get on out there and give it your all. I thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Michael. Cool. Okay, again, thank you all for coming out. My name is Patrick Spanish. Uh, um, I'm the chairman of the Bronx County Conservative. Uh, we've been making some big strides here, um, and I want to acknowledge a lot of people in this room. Uh, we put together a question to sleep candidates uh, this year. We filled uh, 18 of the 21 vacancies. And, uh, that took a lot of work by a lot of people, uh, too many to mention all, but everybody who's out there uh, collecting those signatures, you know who you are, it's a lot of work, and I want to let you know how much we truly appreciate the candidates as well. Uh, another thing I'd like to thank the candidates, it's a tremendous undertaking to stand up and be a candidate. And I want to acknowledge that to all the candidates that were uh, willing to stand up and run on our line. I very much appreciate that. I'm going to announce our first candidate, who also happens to be my vice chairman, uh, Gonzalo Duran. He is running in the 15th Congressional District against Richie Thorpe's. Well, first of all, thank you everyone for coming. I appreciate it very much. And just to throw a little bit more out there, um, welcome to the 15th Congressional District as it's represented. I'm honored to have you all here. Um, you know, in instead of thinking of just one individual, I wanted to make sure that we had everybody here so now they can see what an army that we have ready for the next battle or the next attack that we can do. 
Um, all we're going to do is, uh, since we have a little bit more time for the speakers, I don't think three minutes should be okay. So please uh, add on another minute to your speech. Um, so keep it at three minutes, and, and let's knock it out the park, guys. All right. Good evening, friends, neighbors, and distinguished guests. Thank you all for joining us tonight. It is an honor to stand before you in the heart of the Bronx, a place that I'm proud to call home. Tonight we gather not just as constituents, but as a community united on shared values, common ideas, and a collective hope for a better future. I am here tonight for one reason only, to help bring down the reign of the democratic machine that has taken advantage of the Bronx for far too long. The Bronx is not only defined by its rich history, but the vibrant culture, but also by the unwavering perseverance that is embedded with the foundation of this great borough. The deep roots that the bond, the, the deep roots that bond us all together as Bronxites can never and will never be destroyed. We have been overlooked, ignored, and abandoned. The Bronx has become nothing more than a prop for the political elite and to use when trying to advance their careers and fill their pockets. We have seen promises made and broken, our needs disregarded, and our voices silent. But we are resilient, and we are ready for change. Built by the hardworking hands of generations before us, our borough has seen its share ups and downs. Yet tonight, we all remain strong and tougher than ever before. In recent months, the Bronx has had significant topic of major political discussion and endless cycles of, of new cycles. First, it was the flipping of City Council District 13 by Christy Mamorado who boldly dismantled a 40-year chokehold to Democratic power. Yeah. Yeah. Then, of course, like a bolt of lightning, President Trump touched down on the, on the Bronx, here in the Bronx, for the second time, electrifying the world and reviving the sense of optimism and patriotism the establishment thought they had erased. Despite the history being made here twice, in the same year, the democratic machine continues to fool itself thinking that nothing has changed. Well, we're here to say that's different. That's fine, because while the political leadership insists on hiding in the past, we, it is we who will build the future. Our vision of a new Bronx, a Bronx where every child has access to quality education, where families can afford a living and thriving wage, where our streets are safe and where our economy is strong, is now within our reach more than ever. I'll say that, that part again because it's important. It is now within our reach more than ever. We need leaders who are not just beholden to the political elite and their outsiders, but who are accountable to the people. Leaders who will fight tirelessly for our rights, our needs, and our aspirations. I am here to be that leader, to bring our voices to Congress and to ensure that the Bronx is no longer a forgotten borough, built on focal points of conservative values and ambitious innovations. Vote for me on November, and I will make it my mission to remind the empty suits in Washington that this is our Bronx, our voice, and our future. So let's make history together for a third time May God bless all of us here tonight. May God bless the Bronx. And may God bless America. Thank you. Next up, uh, we're going to ask Ruben Dyer of Vargas. 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 Ruben Dario Vargas. I'm 
running in his 13th congressional district. Thank you. Why am I running for Congress? At this time, there is a call for everyone, every American, every good American person to stand up for, for the direction what this administration, this Washington is taking our country is totally wrong. And we, we have to, we have to stand up. They have been a mysterious, powerful organization uh, recruiting, recruiting uh, uh, foreign individuals from, with mysterious intention and purposes to break into our borders. I call them the, the invaders. To break into our borders, to do whatever they, that organization has been planning to do to America. We will not stand for that. The, our American judicial systems have been used, weaponized, uh, orchestrating uh, uh, maliciously, capriciously, orchestrating activity against uh, our President Donald Trump, with, uh, and that is uh, too bad. We're using the, the judicial system as a tool of retaliation. That is not. That is destroying our democracy. That is destroying our freedom of speech. And that's why we are here, one of the persons that with my energy, with my heart, with my mind, and, and my soul, I will be defending and fighting and to bring strong back to the presidency of the United States. And that's, that's why I'm here. Donald Trump, this is what in our way of life, American way of life. Supporting Donald Trump is supporting our democracy and supporting the value by which America has stood up and has rose up to the power, to the number one in the world. And we're going to keep it that way. We're going to bring it higher, America number one in, in the world. And that's why I'm here. Become the Congress member that will empower me and that will give me the, uh, the ability to provide motivation, inspiration to people of goodwill, Republican and conservative. And tirelessly together, we will we'll work to bring America great, to make America great again. Thank you. en español yo soy Rubén Darío Vargas soy candidato al Congreso por el distrito número 13 eh, estoy aquí porque el, el, la administración actual de Washington está llevando el país eh, por un eh, distinto un camino muy feo muy malo que no es la, la, el, el, la forma que los fundadores de la patria cuando crearon a los Estados Unidos, eso no es lo que ellos querían. La gente actualmente eh, utiliza el sistema judicial para orquestar ataques contra el presidente de los Estados Unidos. Dice sencillamente porque él hizo un excelente trabajo como presidente y ellos no quieren volver que él vuelva a, a ser presidente. Nosotros, eh, 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 hay muchas organizaciones, misteriosas y poderosas organizaciones que con intenciones desconocidas salen a reclutar gente alrededor del mundo para traerlo aquí y, y romper los bordes de nosotros, de, de los Estados Unidos. Y vienen aquí con intenciones malas, intenciones desconocidas. Y nosotros por eso, aquí estamos, Rubén Darío Vargas y, y mucha gente, eh, por lo que al convertirme en congresista del Congreso del Distrito 13, eso nos provee una herramienta, una herramienta para, junto con los, eh, la gente de buena voluntad, republicanos y conservadores, vamos a, a trabajar incansablemente para traer America great again. Thank you.
and I'm kind of casual. So I just want to piggyback what Pastor says and thank the pastor. I want to recognize three people in here very formally. Number one, district leader Edward Dela Cruz, first pastor. He's very keen, Pastor. I want you to use this man. This man who's the host of the public club meetings in the church, but unfortunately, my team platform about the church and speak about what he's been going through uh, uh, in North Manhattan, Washington Heights, with uh, churches up there. In terms of you know United Community under this message of conservatives, I want to thank uh, Mr. Arquilla Rodriguez uh, right there, New York City young Republican, this kind of talk is here, and the gentleman to his left is very key for what happened this weekend. His name is Leo, a member of Lexington, New York, and the Guardians of Divinity. A very shy guy from the Bronx. Now you look at my page. That music video S montage that was put together really blew up the political universe because I put it on my stories beyond and there's so many political operatives and staffers watching us now online because we now have young people all these different videos and sick possible viral with the Bronx Conservative Party brand. So thank you Leah for that and so I'm going to do something with me right now on my own. I'm the on the 33rd State Senate District here in the Bronx. And I just want to touch upon quickly about the churches and faith-based initiatives here on my platform. One of the things I want to expose as a state senator, because I'm solution-based, is how the churches, Pastor, no offense to you with disrespect, are dependent on something called the 501c3. Now raise your hand if you know what a 501c3 is. Now that's what the Democrats, or the Democrats, have their books in to the churches, in which the churches get all the freebies free toys, free school supplies, free turkeys, free food for the pantry, but unfortunately the ministers cannot say what needs to be said from the pulpit, and that's a huge problem. The one institution I'm going to do, if elected to the state senate, I'm going to make sure, not just the churches, but I want to tax, and I can do this, remove the New York State um, tax code changing, I want to tax all the major nonprofits like Planned Parenthood, like Bronx Works, like Hispanic Federation, because they don't do anything for our community but pay protesters to protest Donald Trump and Cortona Park. Now raise your hand if you do that much. <laughs> All right, because they came to our community, paid people to protest Donald Trump, and they were drowned out from so much love from our community and beyond that comes here. So I only had two minutes, so I just want to put that out there. And number two, all these major nonprofits making all this money over our community, yet appoints the governor who controls the state department of education. Our kids in the Bronx don't even know what computer is. Yeah. So phase two is one, change the state tax, so to tax these major nonprofits. And number two, I'll make sure every nonprofit is unionized. Because all these nonprofits that have real workers, and so many people in this very room, they know a case manager or a social worker at a shelter, like me, for example, who try to organize, they can be fired just like that. So just imagine all the work that's our community to help our community with all these social services and these major nonprofits. If they unionize, they can have the upward mobility, like anybody's room that knows somebody used to work for, transit, or the post office, or UPS. So that's my platform. I'm Dion Bob, running for the State Senate, third third and I'm all out solution based on all our problems. Thanks. Um, the next speaker candidate I want to call up is Edwina Herrera, and she will be running in the 34th State Senate District. Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody's having a great time as I am to see everybody here so we can save the state, so we can save, save, uh, save America. Um, I want to introduce myself. Um, as I said, my name is Edwina Herrera. I'm running for the 34th district, that, which covers the Bronx and New Rochelle. Don't get it twisted. Things go out, get bad in New Rochelle too. So we, we go through the same thing as everybody goes down here. I'm originally from Brooklyn, East Flatbush, so for me to come to the Bronx is, is, is a great thing for me. I traveled a long way to get here, and I fought hard to get here. I raised two of my children here in the Bronx. Matter of fact, I live on Lewis Knight Avenue, 
in Boston Road. We're like, where is Kate? No one comes to the Bronx from Brooklyn. You know, but I took and I, and I ventured out. And I left all that behind just to come to the Bronx. And I understand the, the culture here. My husband is from here. And fortunately, I had to come this way because this is where you know he lived. And I'm so glad I did. But like I said, my children went to school here. And they graduated, they went to the military, and they did a whole lot of things that was good for, for, for the same. I also have to know that I'm NYPD traffic. I used to be a tow truck operator right in this borough. That means I'm, I'm, every day I'm talking to somebody. Someone's always in my face. And I meet people from all over, not just the Bronx, Manhattan, Queens, Staten Island. So I get a chance to speak to them and know what's going on. Even though I'm taking their car, when I get a chance to be with them, you know what I mean? It's very personal. I'm also a chaplain of New York State. I became that simply because of 9-11, because I'm a first responder for 9-11. And it was very difficult for a lot of us that was there at that time. So, because we didn't, as practicators, we didn't get a whole lot of things. But other, I don't want to get into all that. I want to let you know that I love New York. I, I want to let you know I love this state. I want to let you know I've been fighting all my life. And I didn't come here to the Bronx not to fight. I'm letting you know the Bronx, we're not punks here. Everybody that comes up in the Bronx, everybody knows we're tough. All of a sudden now, we don't, we don't know what we're doing. I come from Brooklyn, I know we bad, but I know the Bronx is even bad. I was there when Donald Trump came to the Corona Park. Because I used to look up the Bronx. I was right up front. You know what that is to see the president in the United States? As, as a president that lives in this borough, the Bronx is bad. I'm telling you right now, we're not taking this no more. I love this, I love, I love the Bronx. These guys are great, and I know I don't have that much time, but I'm letting you know we're not punks up here. We, we, we don't take back the city. The Democrats have had a stronghold on this place long enough. And, but I remember when I lived in Brooklyn, we used to watch people in the Bronx, I'm like, oh my God, we're right back, and right now we're right back where we started. We have not progressed not one bit. From the time that President Reagan came up here to now, and this is where we at, and it's gotta stop. So I'm letting you know right now, I'm coming to fight. That the woman that's that I'm taking her spot, but she's gonna leave. I'm telling don't, don't change the curtains, sweetheart, because we're coming up. I'm taking your spot. I love the Bronx, I love the state, I love the city. This is I have nowhere else to go, guys. See, a lot of people got a lot of places to go. But America is my home. This is my home. Everybody that come here, they act like this is things. That ain't so. This is where we got. I go two blocks up. If I wear the wrong colors, someone's knocking me in the head. But this is how we got to do when we're here. And I'm going to let you know, I love God. This is a god fair country. You got to know that. And when God is there, we all going to be there. We're going to win. We're going to win this fight. My name is Lorena Herrera, and I'm here for the Next one, I want to call up to the mic. The next candidate is Grace Herrera. Will be running for the 80th Assembly District against uh, John Power. Power. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's also our reporting center. Hi, everyone. Um, Grace Morero. I'm running for the 80th Assembly District in the Bronx against John DeFaro. Um, I didn't prepare a speech as per Gonzalo's uh, suggestions. I just don't do that. I, I cannot prepare a speech. I have to fly off the, uh, from the seat of my pants. That, that's just me. I just take it off the top of my head. I mean, what I have to say is that um, I'm tired, just like everybody here, I'm tired of the Democrats ruling the roost. When I started getting into politics, I was a Democrat. Not because I was, when I was, when I registered to vote way back in the Middle Ages, I, um, they, they just registered me as a Democrat. That's what they did. I didn't know any better. It didn't matter to me. And, and I was never one to vote down the line like most people, like the ones on the plantation do, you know? They vote down the line, they do what they're told, like Master says. Vote well, this way. I don't do that. And so I've always been behind the scene as a as a uh, 
a leader in the community. I've always been behind the scenes, but as I started getting more into politics, you know, someone once told me, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And that's what I'm running on. If you, I will bring you to the table. If you, and think about it. If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. That means you are the main course. You get eaten alive, and it's a fact. If anybody knows anything about politics, you know that is true. And while I support Donald Trump to the umpteenth time, all politics is local. Donald Trump may or may not be in the White House. We have to concentrate on what's local. That means your local community boards, your community, your, your school districts, uh, the dog catcher, whatever. The Board of Elections is running rampant with demon rats that need, the whole things need to be overhauled. They run and rule the roost, and it's do as they say or else. And we're tired of it. I'm a lifelong Bronxite, and I never wanted to get, you know, I'm a behind the scenes person. I'm the one taking the pictures and the videos, that's me. I do stuff behind the scenes. I'm not there to get a pat on my back. But I've just had, after, after the, the last, 10 years at least, seeing what's going on and learning more and more and more. I just am done. Somebody's got to step in there. And while you have a lot of keyboard warriors, and I'm talking to the people, uh, whoever's recording this, you know, everybody says we're gonna do this and they, they get behind you and then when, it's time, when push comes to shove, nobody's there. So either S-H-I-T gets here, or get off the pot. You know, stop talking about doing something. Just do it. Just do it. Do you have? I have nothing to lose. I have no ties to any kind of big corporations or unions or whatever. I don't care. You know, I'm at a certain age now. I'm a, I'm a great grandmother. I have two of my great grandkids here. My granddaughter there. And you know, I didn't want to do this, but. You know, I look at them and I'm like, what kind of a life are they gonna have with this bail reform that they have thrust upon us through the city council and through the legislature up in Albany? I know how that all got started. If anybody wants to know, I'll give you the background on it because it started with a group that I used to belong to. So all these things that are happening, we don't have public safety. I'm all for public safety. I'm all for supporting the police. Up to a certain point, because the police do have to be reined in at some point. You have a bad, a few, a few bad ones that make the whole department look bad. But then you have that that blue wall. You know, if you're going to stick up for a bad cop, as a cop, then that kind of makes you look bad. So that's got to stop. Just there's the um, our infrastructure. I don't know how many people know about what's going on with the city of Yes bad. You gotta say no to the city of yes. The city of yes, yes is going to destroy this city. That's again the city council, but Hopeful's trying to do it statewide. Where they want to build, build, build. They're all in the, the pockets of the developers. And if somebody and we do not take a stand, and I'm talking, you know, we can say we're gonna do this and do that and we can make speeches and, and go protest at rallies and rah rah rah. But at some point, we may have to do a chain link against the building to stop it from being built. We may have to actually put our physical well-being at risk. I'm willing to do that. Are you? Is everybody willing to do that? Because I better see you at the next one. When I call for somebody to come and we have to, we have to form a human barrier, then you all better show up. Because enough is enough. Talk is cheap. And I'm done talking. I'm looking to beat John Zaccaro. John Zaccaro is a nice boy, but he's part of the, well, he's part of the machine. I've nothing against him personally, but he's part of that Democrat machine. They have an agenda. And like I tell people, one, one elected may wear pants, one way may wear a skirt, maybe male, female. It's the same. Nothing changes. So until we get good people, community people, grassroots, I'm grassroots, not like AOC. She's grass nothing. Uh, you know, you need grassroots people who have no ties to any of big business or anything like that. People who can't be bought. I'm not for sale. 
And if I win this seat, I'm very good with, I can talk to anybody, Pat knows. I'm pretty good at, at, at convincing people to change their minds or, you know, I work with people, I'm good with that. I don't have a problem with that. But I'm not gonna be bulldozed. Um, I may be small, or short, but I'm not small. Short, but I'm not a pushover. So if they think uh, that they can run me down and wear me out, it's not gonna happen. I've been through too much for too long, uh, and God has given me the strength to do this. Anytime I start feeling weary, I go to my Lord, and I get refreshed, and that's that. And nobody can beat him. He, he wins all the time. So that's the end of my speech. Uh, if you know people in the 80th and 70th district, please have them vote for me, Grace Morero, on the uh, conservative side. And you'll have some good candidates. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, thank you, Gonzalo. Thank you, uh, Joe. Uh, it's such a great vision to see out and into this group of people here. Like when I first got involved with Patrick in 2020, um, the party was was not as strong as it is today. Uh, well, as stated before, my name is Kevin Casmino. I'm running for the 81st Assembly District against Jeff Free Dinowitz, who, I, in my opinion, is what is wrong with politics in America today. He's been in there for 30 years. He does not care about the constituents. He does not care about the people. He cares about his Democratic Party's agenda. Uh, highly corrupt in terms of the way he operates, in terms of just complete disregard for any, anything. If anybody opposes his opinions, he just basically will just have his operatives come out, film you, and try to uh, you know, disparage your, your feelings and what your opinions are uh, in the media. So um, I'll try to be brief, keep it under three minutes. So uh, on my platform, it's uh, relatively simple. It's like accountability and, and governance. So I'm looking for to establish uh, a recall mechanism so that we can, if we, someone does get into office, but they're not fulfilling their, their oath of office, we can get them removed. Uh, term limits, so that we can stop people from uh, holding office for longer than they should be. It should not be a, uh, it's not a kingdom. They should not just be there indefinitely or try to just hold that as long as possible to then give it down to their uh, incompetent son uh, as he's been trying to do with Eric. Uh, so besides the recall mechanism, I'm looking to also uh, dismantle the election industry complex is just a system. I don't believe that money in politics is the problem in politics. Uh, all these different various jobs that, that are out there, in terms of consultants and all of this, um, all, all of that, the, the fact that we have matched funds in a electoral process currently shows that we have the funds, taxpayer funds, to be able to have a platform, a one-shot stop for all candidates to be able to kind of have an equal footing um, and be able to you know, speak their voice. So it should be all about getting on the ballot itself and that's it, and not about raising money. That I've earned. Throughout the past four years, I've run for city council a couple of times, I've run for state, uh, state assembly, and every time, because I'm against money in politics, I don't like to raise money, I, um, I take in kind donations, I take volunteers and whatnot to help get the word out. But uh, because I am against money in politics, so far you're not a real candidate. Why is that? Why? Because I'm not going to pay for it, because I don't take money from special interest groups, because I don't want to take the bribes, I want to actually uphold what the people's you know, will is. So because of this, uh, people like myself are deemed non-candidates because I don't take donations. So bringing back accountability is, is, is the main, the main, my main focus for if elected. Uh, I'm a father of four. Um, all four of my children have attained school in my uh, district. Uh, I'm for school choice, where the money follows the child. Um, the bigger thing for me, especially as my children have gotten into age where they're getting into high school and whatnot, is I think this whole idea of um, uh, if, you, if you want to go to a good school, you got to commute to, the, the, to whatever, you know, the Bronx Science, for example, which isn't the Bronx, great, but there's other specialized schools where people have to commute. I know a friend of mine, he lived in, in Brooklyn, and his daughter had to commute all the way to Queens. So for me, the biggest thing is to have specialized schools in each district. There's no reason why a child, should, a child, a minor, not only do we have them riding on public transportation in today's day and age, but for them to have to travel and commute more than 15 minutes is ridiculous. 
What we need is a Bronx Science in every district. You know, so we need to have these specialized schools in every district. No child should ever be more than 15 minutes. So we need to fix our educational system, hold audits, hold people account accountable for, for um, how they spend our money and how they distribute our money. You know, they, they think it's okay in terms of how we can just print money away and destroy our economy and just put it on, in debt our children and our children's children indefinitely because they just print money and it's no, it's no, no big deal. It's not worth anything, it's paper. So, like I said, school choice, money for the children, 15 minute less commute time, and making specialized schools in all in every district so the children don't have to commute on public transportation an hour and a half to get a proper education. In terms of crime, I want to reverse all the uh, negative, progressive left uh, legislation that have destroyed our, our basically the ability for police officers to do their job, the ability for prosecutors to prosecute, and it basically empowered criminals and taken away the rights of the victims. So I want to basically make it about the victims first and not the criminals first. I want to be able to put the focus back on on uh, improving police and community relationships. So that way we can we need the police, we need we need law and order, but we also need to make sure that there's you know we can stifle any issues that might occur for some one bad apple, one percent of bad apples that are out there that we can stop that by and we can do that by integrating the community community with the people and, and uh, the, the community with the police are. Um, uh, another thing I want to do is, with in terms of opportunity, I'd like to take money away from not-for-profits and NGOs and shift that towards citizens. So I think that you know a lot of times these not-for-profits they exist, but they make profit. Their board of directors they make profit, and the, the amount of help that actually comes to communities is really not you know minimal. So what I'd rather do is, is give money to our local bodega owner, give money to our restaurateurs and whatnot, who actually know who the homeless people are in our neighborhoods and can feed them directly. And I'd rather give money towards, uh, and special, I think, not only just businesses in the area, but also allow citizen contractors. So specializing, giving employment towards and contracted work towards our veterans and our unemployed and allow them to be able to fulfill the, the, uh, the duties that are needed at home, you know, they, they, they fought for us overseas, they should be able to have an opportunity to, to serve us at home, as opposed to giving it up to a non-profit that's basically just gonna, you know, swallow the money up, up top to their, to their board of directors. Um, and I guess, I think my time's coming down to it. My main, my main point for tonight, you know, seeing how the Bronx party, the party has come so far in the past four years since I've been involved, is to thank you all for coming out and getting involved. Um, I know myself, as Many others have stayed here before too. Is that like growing up, uh, raised by a single mother, me and my brother? I was raised a Democrat. I was progressive for a long time. Before, when progressive was about being anti-corruption and anti-war, but once it became about you know mutilating you know children's genitalia and all this identity politics stuff, is where they lost me. Um, I, again, I'm a staunch anti-war person and whatnot. I don't believe that our tax dollars should be going out to anybody. Uh, any other countries that are money should be staying in here at home. So I thank you for coming out here, for being active. And I ask that between now and November, you keep going out there, keep talking to your neighbors, have those tough conversations with people. Even if you don't agree with them, allow them to speak, allow them to, to voice their opinions, allow them to say how they feel about things. And don't automatically just jump to like a talking point. Hear them out. Because to a certain extent, I mean, while I'm, you know, with my mother being from Colombia, my father being from Ecuador, and you know, my roots coming from South America, I don't believe in socialism. I do not. It's something that, you know, inherently and throughout my heritage is just, you know, um, it's the reason why my, my family came to this country. But families are a social system. So if, if we were one day to be able to, as, as a humanity, be able to come up with, you know, um, uh, a power to solve our, our, our energy crisis and be able to do free energy, then I could possibly see where socialism could work. But until then, it's it's a non viable uh, yeah, a non viable solution. So have those tough conversations with people, hear them out, and then talk to them. And just and, and the, the goal being to get voter turnout. The, the biggest issue that I saw in the last election was like when we had, uh, Eric Adams got elected was a million people out of eight million people elected, and only eight, a million people voted in that last election. So it's, it's a problem about apathy people not believing in the system anymore. So talk to them, get them to go out, and another part of my platform in terms of accountability is I, I kind of want to mandate people to having to come out and vote, 
but also implementing another the above option so that if, if the people go out to vote and they don't have like an option, we put in, they, they can click on uh, none of the above and then there has to be a, another election cycle. So people can actually get quality candidates that aren't opportunists and out there just for themselves. So talk to your neighbors, let's get people out there to vote, and I, I guarantee you that we, we can make some changes. So thank you so much. Very important point that we'll be making there is having dialogue, talking to people. That, that's one of the biggest problems that I personally see with the left and the progressive movement. Their stance is you agree with them 100% or you're their sworn enemy. And we're never gonna get anywhere like that. So we do need to start engaging people that we disagree with and find where we have common ground. That's very, very important. It's a good point that we made. Uh, next, I'd like to call up Emmanuel Finley. Where are you, Manuel? What's your name? Hello, good evening, guys. How are you doing today? My name is Emmanuel Finley, and I'm running for the 79th district. I'm running for assembly in the 79th district. Uh, the reason why I'm running is when I came back to New York, a lot of things that I've noticed, um, apart from before leaving, being able to go into the store and coming back out with you go to store with $50, you come back out with a sizable amount, now you go in and you're lucky if you get a sticker bar. And that's something we need to stop. Uh, we also have we've seen an, an, an increase in a lot of the crimes that are going on because of the, uh, the increase of threshold for what they consider a national crime. We cannot have that. We need to have law and order. We need to have law and order here, and we need to make sure that the people that we put in the position to um, effectuate effective the change that we want to see, that these people are actually listening to us and doing what, we, what we're actually going to do. We can't have people that are going into the stores and stealing up to $800 or $999, but because they didn't get $1,000, oh, so you can go free. That's not how it works, because it comes back on the community. Because if you look on uh, 170, uh, 60, 160, 169, 160, you go down uh, the right and you see them. No longer there. They have been robbed, clean. Now, we're lucky that you go down there, you still have the pharmacy section open, but that's because when the entire store is locked off. We cannot have that. We cannot have wherein criminals are being allowed to roam free. But then the everyday citizen is being penalized instead. You are there for us. You are there to make sure that our lives move a lot smoother. And we can do this by the legislation. We have to repeal the whole sanctuary city. Act. We're no longer sanctuary city. If you want to come here, if you want to be uh, the sanctuary city, you should be for, for, for um, legal residents and American citizens. And when you come in, you should not be here saying, oh, we're gonna um, cycle off from the taxpayers without putting anything back in. Because every one of us here went to work this morning. And yet still we got back up and came here because we don't like to see, we don't like seeing what's happening in our community. And we want to change that. And we have to uh, make a stand. We cannot let the Democrats think that, oh, they have complete control over us and they don't even have to try to appease us. You have to work for our vote. It's not free. It costs us something to vote for you. So when you are there, like it or not, you are the sacrificial lamb. That is, that is the position where it is. Because when things go right, it's your fault. When things go wrong, it's your fault. So if you don't step up when people are uh, telling you what's wrong, then that is also your fault. You have to step up. You have to take uh, action when things are going on that are negatively impacting your community. You say you represent these people. You see, we represent what we are, um, our way of life. You see, we represent us. You understand us, but your actions don't show that. You're throwing, you're, you're throwing out to the point where now New York City's throwing out uh, um, tourists. You're throwing out people that come in here to spend money so you can put people that are here illegally in the same room, and then you're taking the taxpayer money to pay for that, and you're telling us, "Look, I'm going to see here." I got a question. The money that Donald Trump is supposed to pay. Where is, where is that going? Do we know how they're going to spend that money? Every year you find out that they, they misplace billions of dollars. 
you want to increase our taxes, but you cannot properly allocate the money we already give you. You're losing billions of dollars, trillions of dollars, sending it abroad, while our people and our kids right here, you're telling them you don't have enough for them. You're cutting back the school program for, for our children. But you're telling us, oh, don't worry about it. What about um, the kids over there and, and across the seas, wherever you want to come from? Or what about the ones that are down in the world? Okay, I, I feel for you, I empathize with you. But charity begins at home. I'm not going to take this book from my kids' mouth to be yours. I'm sorry. I got here to be strong because I took care of mine. I'm willing to help you out, but you got to follow the rules. And that's why I'm running. Next, I want to call up Stephanie Reggio. Stephanie Reggio. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
right, well, it is good to be here with all of you. I want to take you, I want to thank you for taking the time to come out and support so many of our candidates running in the Bronx, running to try and restore this state that we love and this city that we love to go, an empire state, as it used to be called. You think of the individual that currently represent our state, that currently represent this borough. And it appears as if the needs of the people got left behind on their trip up I-87 to do the people's work up in that city where up is down and left is right. The capital, all of it. We have in New York State what is often referred to as a three men in the room approach to governance, where you would have the governor and the speaker of the assembly and the Senate majority leader, and they sit in a room, and those are the last three people that get all the muckraking done, and in the end, you get a budget. You get a document that can be used to ensure a roadmap for the future. And I remember my entire youth in this state, people complaining about the fact that we were not represented in the room, that we did not have a seat at the table. And yet, here we are in a 2024 New York, where the governor is a woman, where the Senate majority leader is a black woman, where the speaker of the assembly is a black man. Plenty of representation as the left would like to call it in that room, but the needs of our community still got locked at the door. You think of the most prolific individuals in Congress that represent the borough of the Bronx down in D.C., the Jamal Bowman, the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, the Richie Torres, and it appears that they are on a crusade for everybody but you, that they don't seem to be bothered by the fact that the majority of the children that attend schools in this district cannot read at grade level, cannot do math at grade level. They will tell you that racism is the original sin of this nation, that white supremacy is the greatest threat facing black and brown people today, and somehow they skip over the part where all the black and brown children are trapped in school buildings that are an abomination because of policies they refuse to change. So we come here to gather. Though there might not be many of us in this room, we can make more than a joyful noise. We can make a prolific difference. If we tap into our hearts, our compassion, our desire to ensure that our children inherit an America better than what we found. For every generation that has called this nation home, that has been the fine print of our Constitution, of our founding documents, that if you embrace the opportunity of this nation, just by virtue of breathing in the air of this nation, that your children will be better off than you were. And we face a generation where, statistically speaking, that will no longer be the case. There's this notion, particularly in our communities, that if there's not a program, then there's not a plan. That there has to be some form of structure put together by the government and the government has to come and save you. The reality is it is the government that has harmed us the most. I don't take any glee in saying it, it's simply the truth. Up 87, all the way up in a place called Rochester, New York, a place that is smaller than New York, but in many ways faces the same problems as New York. Uh, there is a school district where there are 20,000 families, the overwhelming majority of them being uh, black people, brown people. Of those 20,000 families, 16,000 of them applied for charter school admission because the schools are not working because their children uh, have suffered from the cutting of the after-school programs, and now they're getting shot after school instead of doing something constructive 
after school. Rochester, New York, the murder capital or higher per capita than Chicago, Illinois. You wouldn't know that watching the news. Certainly the governor is not talking about it. But it is an example of what has happened all across this state because every single person that represents the city of Rochester at the local level is a person that looks like us. Every single person that represents them at the local level is a Democrat. And every single person that represents them at the state level is also a Democrat. And every single person that's representing them at the federal level is a Democrat. And yet, all of them have said no to the cries of 16,000 families in Rochester crying out for charter schools. And it's everywhere in this state and it's everywhere in this country. Education is the civil rights issue of our time. And instead of having people like George Wallace down in the South famously standing in the door well of the schoolhouse saying, you shall not pass segregation now, segregation forever. No, they stand in the door well in New York State looking the other way, keeping your children trapped in those buildings that are failing them year after year, day after day. And I ask people, what in the world is the difference? To me, it is a worse crime to claim you love people, to claim you are the only ones that can fight for them, to demand orthodoxy, to demand a complete vote from one community and then do very little to solve their problems. In fact, you do the opposite. You do everything to codify those problems. I'm an 80s baby when I was in high school, in elementary school, the education budget for the state was somewhere around $10 billion for around 2 million students, uh, 2.5 to be exact. We're now down to around 2.4 million students. The budget's up to $30 billion, and the kids are reading worse than ever before. That is not the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. That is abuse. When you see a woman who is married to a man who isn't even a man and puts his hands on her time and time again and yet she goes back, we don't say that that woman is trapped in a cycle of insanity. We say that she is trapped in a cycle of abuse. And our communities have been trapped in this systemic abuse, since they love to use the word so often, but they are the abuser. When you look at public housing, I ran for United States Senate against Charles Ellis Schumer in 2022. Quit my job and use that to do so because I believe that if I didn't do so, that the conversation that was necessary would never occur. When I did that, public housing in New York City was $40 billion behind on repairs. We had 20,000 elevators that did not work. Two and a half million votes later, we came up short, and apparently nobody paid attention to the conversation because that same public housing home too uh, are over 500,000 New Yorkers. Public housing in NYCHA, that if it were a city unto itself, would be the 35th largest city in this nation, is $80 billion behind on repairs. Lead in the drinking water, arsenic in the drinking water, and they tell you there's nothing to see here. When there was finally an investigation, when there was finally a lawsuit filed, when the federal government finally said, perhaps we might need to step in here, it was Tish James that went there and cut the deal to give the city more time to get ahead of the issue. And all that more time bought us was $40 billion more of problems that should have been fixed many, many moons ago. And so this is what happens. Every four years, every two years, they come to you and tell you that the problems that plague our community are expansive, but also things that we can't afford to focus on. You want to go talk to them about the fact that we've got children being shot in playgrounds, Yes, that's important, but we can't talk about it this year. It's more important to beat the Republican. You want to talk about your children not being able to read or do math after 13 years in a building paid for with taxpayer dollars. They say it's a problem, but we need more money. And even so, right now, we can't talk about it. It's more important to beat the Republicans. It's more important to find people that actually care about the individuals doing the voting 
instead of trying to pretend you care about them, you take the only thing they have control over, the power of their vote, because they've certainly lost much control over their lives. So that's why I come here, it's why I continue to travel this state, it's why it's important for all of us to support these local candidates, because they are doing the unseen work. If you listen to people that look like us who get paid a decent amount of money to trash individuals that look like us on your local television, on your cable network dial, they will tell you that there are a bunch of step and fetch it people. The uh, all skin folk are not kin folk people who are lying to you, who are trying to lead you down a wrong path and make a covenant with death. I would say we've spent the last 40 years making a covenant with death, and the results, they speak for themselves. If there were better Democrats running, you wouldn't be here. But every Democrat that claims to be a better Democrat shows up and walks in lockstep with the individuals that came before them, leading us down a path where we receive less than we deserve, where we receive crumbs at a table built for us. And it can't go on. And so, yes, in New York State, they created a boondoggle up in Albany called the Matching Fund. Some of the candidates who are running I hear will have the benefit of them, not all of them. But whether they have those matching funds or not, if they have $5, be sure to see if you can help them out. To go tell your neighbor, are you aware of the fact that there's not a single black child in your school district that can read at grade level? Because there are parts of this city where that is the case whole buildings of failure. Not a single child in the building who can read and read. They don't want to talk about it. Because then they might be forced to acknowledge that they have failed you time and time and time again. And so these are mistakes. I don't want to get too long in the tooth here, but I want to encourage you to keep going. I want to encourage you to call your neighbors, to tell them that they have to move differently, choose differently. Nothing changes if nothing changes. And that's the case whether you're struggling with alcoholism or whether you're dealing with systemic abuse brought to you by people who are wielding power in your name to do nothing to help anybody but themselves. So God bless you for all that you do. Let's remember those, those faithful words from Corinthians, if my people who are called by thy name, so humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn for their wicked ways. Then I shall hear their cries in heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. If we want healing in the Bronx, we've got to move differently. If we want healing in New York State, we've got to choose differently. If we want healing in America, then we must come out from those who would lead us astray, who are living their lives in a manner that is not consistent with the teachings that we've been taught to uphold. That is our quest for such a time as this, and by the grace of God, by the will of you, and all the people of this city, we will have a New York worth an empire state once again. God bless you all, and thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to do this to you, Gary, but you're next. We're all right. Good evening, all. Gary Lux. I'm running for the New York State Assembly District 85. Was, was born in this country, lived in the Bronx my whole life. You know, my mom and my brother worked for the Board of Ed. They passed away a while ago. You know, our government, you know, ignores the problems in our district. You know, I believe in better wages, control prices, more employment, fair employment for people, opportunities and businesses in our district. See, see the buildings in our area for over a decade. You know, stable rent. Is a nightmare. You know, fair and reasonable housing for the homeless and veterans. Stronger laws against domestic violence and criminals. You know, if I'm elected assemblyman, I'll work with everybody on every issue, bring improvements to our district. You know, the Bronx is a nightmare. You know, the demons, the crafts, you know, what they do. You know, you know we've got to all work together, you know. I was struggling myself, you know. You know, I'll leave it at that. I love the conservative party, met great people here. I'm sorry, just take my time. 
you know, I was just across the old look to a while. I looked at my whole life. I'm likely going to look here the rest of my life. Hope to get a chance to work with you all, you know. By miracle, I win the vote. So I'll appreciate it. You know, thank you all very much. God bless you all. Okay, next, I want to pull up Darnie. Darnie, you want to say a few words? Darnie's running in, uh, <laughs> Peace and blessings. Uh, my name is Donnie K. Ball Rivers. Born and raised in the Bronx, 56 years. And um, that's first of all, I can put that out there. Because you know, a lot of people come to our borough and they try to, you know, get in position and get in this. And the first thing that they tell me is that either, you know, their parent come from the Bronx, or uh, they came to the Bronx 20 years ago, or they know somebody from the Bronx, but I'm actually born and raised in the Bronx, 56 years. It was hard for me to have that conversation with somebody who just came here and I was born and raised here. Born and raised here when it was called the Boogie Burnt Down Bronx. I was here when it was the crack epidemic here. I was here when the heroin epidemic was here. I was here when the gang was beating people up away or red, white, and blue on the days, certain days. I was here for the foundation, born here. And to see the way that the Democrats is putting the Bronx to fall back into the same position, it's like we back in the 70s. You know, for this 2024. So I build on my platforms and the main, the, my three main platforms I want to build on. One is mental health. You know, if you really look at it, the majority of the crimes that's happening now, the reason why the majority of people is homeless is because they have a mental health issue. In the United States, nationwide, 22% of the people deal with some type of mental health illness. That means 59.7 million people dealing with some type of mental health illness, you know? These are all from, ranging from bipolar to schizophrenic, pyromaniac, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we most definitely gotta come down and deal with that. But that is like the cure, 47% of the people that's in our city jails is dealing with mental health problems. So mental health is really hard and it's something that we should be addressing immediately. My next thing is community funding. When I say community funding, I mean like bring it back to the community, put money into community centers. The average kid can't go from this community to this community because the Democrats have pitted them against each other where they don't accept each other from this community to this community. So that means that we gotta have community centers in every community. We also gotta put funding into having community trades. We gotta have trade programs inside our community. They stopped teaching kids trade in school over 10 years ago. So kids are leaving school and all they want to do is read and write. They have no trades. So we got to bring trading programs back to the community. That's one. We got to bring back job centers back, places that can place people, job placement centers back inside the community. These are things that we need. When we go back and I say community funded, we got to dig into the community board. The Democrats got a lot on the community board. We gotta change the community boards. The reason why we have five liquor stores in each community is because the community board, they're the ones that approve these things. When you got hookah shops and smoke shops right across the street from the schools, the community board is the one that, can do, that approve these things. So it's important for us to change those community boards, for us to get up in there and let the community know who is the community board, but the average person don't even know what community they're in. So when they, people say local politics is important, it's very important. The average person only know who the president is. When you start asking them who they know who politics is, this, they don't know. You ask them what district they live in, they don't know. You ask them what community board they in, they don't know. But these are important things that we need to come back out and bring this to the community. My next thing is to try to end this call when they got the fentanyl pandemic. And I hear a lot of the Democrats jump out and say it's the opiate pandemic. It's not the opiate pandemic. The opiate pandemic was in the 70s, when it was the heroin pandemic. Right now it's the fentanyl pandemic. Fentanyl is in everything. It's not only in, in products that's made out of opium, it's also inside marijuana. It's also inside the lean syrup that these kids are drinking. It's also inside the designer ecstasy pills that the kids are taking. 
So when you really look at it, you got people dying from 14 years old on the fentanyl because they're taking the fake Percocets, they're taking ecstasies that's laced, and then you got people that's 75 years old that's dying from the same fentanyl, but it's laced inside the heroin, it's laced inside the cocaine, it's laced in other things. So when it all breaks down to it, you know, it's a fentanyl pandemic, not an opiate pandemic. Peace and blessings. Keep on with it. Okay, okay. Hey, how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Um, I'm a little nervous, so bear with me, bear with me. Um, but before I introduce myself first, I would like to say thank you guys for all being out here today. Thank you, Duran, Gonzalo, appreciate you, Pat. You know, I appreciate you and the pastor for allowing us to throw events here. And even also, I also commend you for last year for allowing us to throw something in the parking lot for the youth. You know, I, I got to say thank you for what you do for this community. And all you candidates that came out to speak today, you know, um, as a young man and watching y'all, listening to y'all, you know, I got a different perspective now of how we can better all work together, you know, to unify and bring change to the Bronx. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Tyree Goodman, and um, I'm a young man from the Bronx. I'm born and raised in the projects of Jackson, um, shelf on 169 in Walsh. Ran through all these projects and with my friends, having fun, you know, growing up as any other project kid. Um, even today, I would have came regular pants. Somebody told me I had to look the part, so, you know, I'm trying to be the change I wish to see, so I'm here with the suit on. But, I'm pretty much here as a representation of those from my community. The youth are feeling like they're being not heard, you know, and not only is the youth feeling like they're being not heard, but the people and the elderly are feeling like they're not being unheard either. And what happens is, if they're not feeling like they're being heard, then they have no answers for us. And if you don't have no answers for us, we're not obligated to listen to you or follow you in any direction. And then hence what happens is they come to the streets where they find those strong black leaders, those strong leaders who's willing to guide them in a whole different way and have patience with them. In order for us to change this dynamic, we must educate the people. We must teach them what zoning and local government is. I'm only 32 and I just found out about this. That's bad and that's sad. Even that learning that I can run for local elections. So when I got the opportunity, I jumped for it. You know, because I said, you know what's crazy? If I won, I'd chill with these people that's on the board's kids. I went to a Democrat club meeting and none of their kids knew that they was even in office or what they do. Came back to the block, yo, you know your mom was in, in such and such? Oh no, we didn't know. Oh, you don't know. But meanwhile, their kids is out there shooting and killing. You tell me how that makes sense. So therefore, I don't care whether you're a Democrat, Republican, or anything. My problem is, is that us as a people, we gotta stop allowing these parties to come here and separate us and tell us that we need to be against our own. We need to work together. Because what happens is, is that while they're sitting there getting those other people that's voting for the Democrats and saying, hey, well, get with us, get with us, and their kids is out there killing, and then they're blocking off everybody else, what happens? Those kids start killing those kids. You got communities right now that's fighting for resources that can be used, that can be utilized to bring us together. If these community boards don't talk to, to each other and they don't work to each other, don't look to the youth to work to you, work, work with each other. For what? Y'all don't even like each other. Y'all want us to lock each other? Y'all don't even work block to block, but y'all want us to work from block to block. Me, I'm the reflection, honestly, of what they missed out on. They didn't look my way. They didn't give me an opportunity, all my people, an opportunity to speak. But the conservative party did. Underdogs did, but it shouldn't take for underdogs to come in our community to say, you know what, we're sick and tired of being heard. It should have been already the people that already had the power. And then the sad part about it is, outside of us, in the Democrat Party, you have a bunch of people that are not getting help from, that is doing way more for the community than anybody. And they're not here today. They're not standing up right now. So the reason why I'm here is to pretty much motivate, educate, and to show, listen, if I could do this, y'all could do this too. I'm from where y'all from. I'm from the hood. I'm from all that. We did all that. We was outside, you know. But at the end of the day, I'm here to say that we need to see 
the government needs to see everybody else unify, work together. And if, when it comes to me, you know, I'm willing to work with any of you guys to help bring the youth involved, to help bring up, bring them all to y'all message. Because in all reality, y'all can say whatever y'all gonna say, but the change comes, y'all gonna need the youth. The change, the next generation to put up a fight, y'all gonna need to move. And if they don't know what the district is on the list, what are they gonna vote for? Who are they gonna vote for? Me. Because I'm here. Jason. Jason is from Old Manhattan. He's a rising star in the uh, conservative party. In the Hello, how's everybody? Wow, this mic is loud. Wow. I'm a DJ, so I do this for a living now. I talk to people, I hype up the crowd. You know, that's what I do on the radio and uh, when I do artist showcases and stuff like that, you know? But uh, yeah, first of all, I'm uh, honored and privileged to be here tonight. I find a distinguished, fine uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my colleagues, my friends, community leaders, you know, the future generation of politics here in New York City. You know, just like everyone else here earlier that's been on the stage, we'll all have something in UNICEF that it is time for change here in New York City. For way too long, it's been a system of two parties, and mostly the destructive socialist Democrats who have destroyed our neighborhoods, our city, our districts, our entire country. The Democratic Party today is not of those of decades ago. This is not the Kennedy uh, you know, Democrats anymore, okay? And we don't even have a real commander in chief in the White House right now. Okay, we can talk about that. But we'll take that topic for another day. Because today is about unity with the New York City from the Bronx, Brooklyn, Staten Island, Queens, and Manhattan. And that's why I decided to, I used to be a professional wrestler. And I went from the wrestling ring to the political ring because it's time to kick butts and take names and hold a people accountable. Yeah. And just like Triple H, if you're a wrestling fan, he had a sledgehammer. I'm gonna take the same sledgehammer and dismantle the democratic machine. When I am elected as the next city councilman for District 2 in 2025. Because just like when Ronald Reagan said, stop, I am saying no mas on the behalf of 170,000 people of the Lower East Side, East Village, Alphabet City, that is fed up with the BS, destructive Democrats who have destroyed our city, our parks, our neighborhoods has brought crime, has brought a migrant crisis here. Now I'm for all, I am for legal immigration, okay? But I am not for illegal migrants that are, you, are stealing our resources, all right? Our hard earned tax dollars and are draining our economies and social services that are vital for New Yorkers. My mother-in-law recently passed away last month and she died in a hospital living in a shelter of a house fire two years ago right here in the Bronx not far from here in part because they had no room for her you know vacancies in an apartment because the migrants come first but I'm here to put an end to that because once I'm a city council in my first hundred days, I'm gonna have legislative action. I'm gonna introduce a bill to end sanctuary city status. And it will get passed. So, I know I had a script here, you gave me a script here, you know, but let me just uh, read that, I guess, you know? Thank you, Gonzalo. All right, so, um, yeah. For too long, our district has faced challenges that have gone on unaddressed. We need better access to quality health care, improved health uh, education for our children, job opportunities that pay a living wage. We deserve safe neighborhoods and government that listens to us and works for us. We're beholden for the people, by the people, and of the people. And I'm going to restore the public trust 
that you finally have someone that works for you. And I am only running for you. Everyone that's here in this audience, everyone in my district, everyone out there in New York City. I'm not beholden to special interests, lobbyists, million dollar developers. And I'm gonna do my part to kick all the corruption out of City Hall once I'm in office. Yeah! That's right. And in closing, I'm gonna have real bail reform that we go after violent offenders instead of presidents. It's disgraceful what they've done. It's disgraceful. But we're gonna make it better once I'm elected as your next city councilman in 2025. And it starts all with you guys and winning this November, all right? We're gonna make New York City great again. We're gonna flip it red where it needs to be. All right, we're gonna bring law and order back to New York City. My name is Jason Morello. I thank you for your time. More information about my campaign. All right, I'll go to my website, Jason Morello, M-U-R-I-L-O, for NYC.com, or DJ Lava for NYC.com. I thank you for your time. And uh, thank you for having me. And let's go conservative party. Let's kick some butt. Let's go and bring back to America. Let's go. Here in the Bronx, the conservative party, we're moving these meetings around the Bronx, trying to do at least one a month. Um, I ask everybody who came tonight, come to our next one. We'll bring two more people. And we got to keep this thing growing. Sorry, you have a question. I have a comment. If these guys were running in Clark, in Rockland County, you guys would win. I wish I had, we had the passion you guys had here. Oh, you guys have a lot of And I do want to mention our next event that we do already have scheduled. We're going to be having a watch party for the presidential debate uh, on June 27th. Uh, what's the address here? Uh, it's the PX Hotspot on uh, 9631 3rd Avenue. Uh, we'll be having a hot and cold buffet there, and uh, you're all welcome. 